guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to do a really great color palette. I've done silver, I've done gold, but I haven't really concentrated on copper or pink gold. And this color combination can be kind of like for both. I'm going to do metallic copper hair, which I know sounds a little weird, but this actually comes out really nice. I'm gonna be working at Circle Portraits by Laura Rafferty. I did the bottom layer because that takes up so much time and I did an aquamarine background which will be changed up completely by the time I'm done and I put a light coat of peach on her face. Get out your color palette page from your CMW workbooks. This color palette that we're going to be working with has a lot of variations in it. It has a core palette and then variations that you can do by switching up some of the pencils. So we're going to take a look at what those core pencils are, and I'll show you how to change them up. Right now, we're going to be working with dark brown, sienna brown, black, cream, pink, and poppy. And we're going to consider those the core colors. By changing up one or two of those pencils to some of the variations, you're going to change the copper color that you're creating. Now, the one that we're going to be doing now, this is a very coppery metallic combination. We're going to begin with the highlight, which I've chosen cream. And you're going to go down the middle of the hair going around the head. Your variations on this can be cream white cream now we're going to go to pink and we're going to do our blend going outwards now the pink is very important when it comes to copper there is pink in copper you can choose from blush pink hot pink or just pink pink for this i'm just using pink pink but those are the variations on it and any variation thereof um, now you can go on the other side and do the pink on the other side because we're blending both ways going away from the highlight. Remember, we're still on bottom layer, so it's not going to be completely blended out yet. And I'm also going very fast because of time. Now you want that pink to touch that yellow. It's going to blend completely into it. And you leave as much of the highlight open on the yellow as you want your highlight to be. Okay, I'm going to take this going all the way around in the same way. And I'll be back for the next color. The next color we're going to use is Poppy Red. Now, instead of the Poppy Red, you can also choose Pumpkin Orange. It works also depending on whether you want more red copper than you want an orange copper. Pumpkin orange would give you a more orangey copper. So you would go in for the next color down with your poppy red. Still creating that, that gradient. Now I know it doesn't look very coppery right now, but it will turn copper. I promise you. And I'm taking it all the way out to the edge, even though we have a lot more colors to add. And you can kind of see the copper starting to form. I think to get a really good copper, it's all in the pinks. That's my favorite part of the copper. Remember, this is just bottom layer. I'm establishing where my colors go. And I'm working very lightly. You don't want to tap down your tooth by going too hard too fast. And as I said, depending on where you put your hand, that red right in the middle of here because I'm kind of working on this highlight and that highlight. Okay, I'm going to take this going all the way around 
and I will be back for the next color. The next color I'm going to bring into it is the Sienna Brown. Now, the Sienna Brown was starting to darken things up. So, when you're using it, you want to bring it in as strands into the other colors. So, you can go high with it. But I would only do down at the tips getting darker. And as you could see, as I do this, bring some strands up. And you could see the copper and the hair starting to form once you get this color going. And just bring it up as individual strokes. Now I did move my hand down on the pencil because I am looking for some control. Especially with those strands. See, you never want to leave hair looking like this. With hair, you're going to bring it always up and a darker color going through the highlight so it starts to look in depth. It's really very easy once you get the hang of it. Hair is not as mysterious as people make it out to be. When you want an area to go in and blend, you just add a darker area in it. Now you could see, you could see how open and clumpy this is. And once you start to add those color strands in, it doesn't look as clumpy. You can almost make those really dark guidelines that Laura put in. You can make them disappear. You actually don't even need guidelines when it comes to hair. If, like, I would do this, maybe this one would be here, this one would be here, maybe one or two over here, and that's all I would need for hair. You know, if this was, a, you know, my own sketch. Don't get me wrong, Laura did a an amazing job with this. It had just the right amount of everything in it. And I love when artists do that. Now we still have, this is only the Sienna Brown. We still have dark brown and black. So I'm going to concentrate on this for now. And then I'll work on up there behind the scenes. I'm getting out my dark brown. And I'm kind of going to do the exact same thing. Bring in those strands, working it through the blend, and then darkening up the tip. And each time I do that, I darken up less and less. Just like that. Try not to leave color lines. Like, it shouldn't be like a straight line going down. It should kind of look like this, where the line varies. So we're no longer on bottom level. Your colors are going to start to blend up nicely right now. And I'm starting to think, where would I have my shadow colors? Now, I didn't include any of the shadow colors in there. And I want to start doing second layer on some of my other colors. So I'm going to come back with some of the pink. And I'm going to hit it with some more of the red. 
bringing that out. And the more red you put in, remember, you can interchange that with um, pumpkin orange for a more orangey look. Copper's got a very wide variety. All the metallics really do of color range. And by even just changing up one or two of the colors, you completely change up the shade of copper that you're creating. So if you're picking a palette, I would just go on the side and look how different this looks than up here. Now I'm gonna go into my gray. Once I go into my gray, you're gonna really see the lines disappearing. Getting them blended in. And this would be all shadowed. Now notice I haven't used black yet. I like to use black at the end. Of course, depending on the picture, the last picture I did, I used black really soon. But the rules of art change so often, there shouldn't even be rules. But remember, we talked about my process. And my process includes using black at the end. And that's, if you haven't watched the Seesaw video, the Seesaw of Color, when you're going back and forth with your color, the darker an area is, the lighter your area is going to look. So if you add light, your darks are going to look darker. If you add dark, your lights are going to look lighter. And that's why I leave black to the end. And of course, white is the same way. Making sure this gets very blended. Now, as you blend in your other colors, okay, the more you put, it goes deeper and deeper into the hair. So the more I blend out, like in this area, what I put on before is going to go deeper into it, giving it more richness and that's going to be dark, that one. And it's going to recede into the hair. Get a little bit more pink in there. I want a pinky. Copper. I tried it with the hot pink too, and the hot pink came out really good also. So it's definitely a contender whether you want to use pink or hot pink. I haven't gone back to my sienna brown in a while. I'm going to do that. Sienna brown is used in all the metallics except the silver. Silvers are really just the grays. I've demoed silver for you guys. It's actually a pretty easy color to do. And let me get my sienna back in there. Sienna will keep hair at a more natural color. Because obviously people are not born with metallic copper. I'm going to go all the way around. And then we'll come back to do some of the final details on the hair. I've been working on it for a while now. And you can see it's still it's coming along. It still has a lot more to go. But I'm going to add in now a little Posca over here. A little white. So when you add in your black, 
as you add in black into it, the white gets even brighter. And this is why I'm leaving the black for the very end. And you can see it becomes more and more like a roll of copper wire. Just kind of what I wanted. <laughs> I'm not adding too much black in. Less in this case is more. So you see, that's pretty copper. And I'm going to stop here for now because the video is getting too long. In the next video, we're going to work on the background. And we're going to do the background in a copper with a blue patina. It's going to come out very pretty. And I will see you in my next video.